Hey everyone, we're talking about why winter hiking doesn't suck <laughs> and how you can have more fun in a winter hike or even a winter backpacking trip and kind of the mindset that you might uh, create for yourself to be able to have a good experience when you go out on a winter hike, but also the gear that's necessary, because we love talking about gear, but the gear that's necessary for you to enjoy yourself, be safe, and just overall get back to the car with a good experience having been out there on the trail. So I'm out hiking in one of my absolute favorite areas to be hiking close to home. And that's the first thing that I wanna talk about when it comes to having a good time and making sure that hiking in the winter doesn't suck for you. And that is go somewhere familiar, go somewhere that's close to home because if you travel long distance, you get super cold, you just have a miserable experience for some reason, make sure that you stay close. And if you are not somebody that does uh, winter hiking very often, then this is a good way for you to just get out and go for like a quarter mile, for a half mile, something short that's going to give you the opportunity to just enjoy being out in the beautiful winter wonderland that I have here. But in some of the places that uh, some of you live, you may not ever see snow, but still you may not be used to uh, cold weather hiking. And so you have to mentally prepare for that. And that's the next thing that we're gonna talk about is the mental side of having a good time out in the backcountry. So let's talk about the mental aspect of going out on a winter hike like I am right now. I like to give myself some kind of task while I'm going out there, whether that is I'm going out to walk the dog, or in this case, I am here to make myself a nice little lunch and just keep myself busy and enjoy uh, this fresh snowfall that we've got. So going out with some kind of task is gonna provide an opportunity to keep yourself busy and a way to stay warm and uh, you get to just enjoy yourself a little bit more, meaning that like in this sense of, I'm gonna make some lunch for myself, I get to slow down and just stop and enjoy myself. I don't have to be walking a really long distance to have a great time. Like my point in coming out today was to come and <laughs> literally eat a uh, package of ramen noodles and to walk my dog. That was it. And having that like mental side of things where you are going out to accomplish something, you are wanting to reach a goal or just as simple as making lunch. That's the point of coming out on a winter hike is give yourself a task, keep yourself busy, have the gear with you that facilitates being able to uh, accomplish those goals. And uh, let's talk about gear a little bit more here in a second after I finish my lunch. So as we get talking about gear today, I wanna thank backcountry.com for sponsoring this video. There's so many cool options of winter gear items that you can get from Backcountry. It really doesn't matter what gear you purchase as long as it works and is the right tool for the job. And Backcountry seriously has so many awesome options. Things that I'm gonna show you here today that I have got from Backcountry to help me enjoy myself a little bit more out in the Backcountry as I'm doing my winter hiking. Now, if you have questions about what specifically you should get that would work best for your area, for your needs, get on a chat with their gearheads. Those gearheads are amazing for answering questions and providing suggestions of gear items that make the most sense for what you need to get out and have a good time in the backcountry. Now when it comes to the gear that you use for winter hiking, having the right tool for the job is absolutely key because otherwise you are legitimately risking your safety while you are out there. Having the wrong footwear, having the wrong insulation pieces, just having the wrong gear in general could really pose an issue while you are out there. So I wanna talk about first the gear that I have on me personally. But I wanna talk about footwear first. I think footwear is so vital because protecting your feet is so, so critical. And having a good insulated boot is, in my opinion, the best way to enjoy a good winter hike. So I wanna talk about the boots that I'm wearing today, which are the Keen Revel 4 Polar uh, Mid. This is a waterproof insulated winter boot. But more specifically, I wanna talk about the outsole 
on this boot. Now you guys have seen me talk about these boots a little bit, but I'm not really dug into the actual construction of these boots and why they're so good for winter hiking. <laughs> Doing yoga over here. But these Keen Polar uh, Revel 4 boots have an outsole that has a fiberglass material, like a microscopic material that is built into the sole that has allowed Keen to get a snowflake rating on these particular boots, which makes them so awesome for winter conditions. They're meant to walk on ice and snow. That's what they are designed for. And the traction that you get out of these boots is amazing. And when you couple it with a nice gaiter system, synthetic pants, and a base layer underneath your pants, which I've got the Smartwool 150 weight uh, base layer uh, leggings or long underwear uh, under right now very comfortable and smart wool mid-weight socks as well so all of that for my lower body is creating a nice system that is keeping me protected safe dry happy all of that now for my upper body I've got a few layers on right now but if I strip down a little bit I've got a base layer which is the 250 weight smart wool base layer long sleeve and then on top of that, I've got a synthetic layer that is a lightweight synthetic layer that's going to allow me to be active and let uh, my body basically breathe and not get overheated while being out there that creates a lot of sweat because once you sweat and you stop, you uh, create an opportunity for you to get extra cold and could create some kind of safety issue while you are out there. Now, while I'm stopped, I've actually got this down layer on top as well, just to keep me a little bit warmer. This is the Outdoor Research Helium down hoodie. Love this jacket, but I would never hike in this and make it an active layer. This is for stopped and enjoying myself while I'm having lunch or whatever task I'm here to do while I'm out. And then on my hands here, I've got a liner pair of gloves from Black Diamond. This is a Polar Tech like grid style uh, glove, just something lightweight that also allows me to work my phone and stuff. But when it comes to gloves as well, fortunately it's not super cold right now. It's about 24, 25 degrees Fahrenheit, but I always carry an extra pair of gloves that are a more insulated thick pair of gloves for while I'm out. Now a couple other layer pieces that I like to have with me is what I've got here around my neck, which is a buff, but it just provides opportunity to uh, keep my face warm. If a big wind or anything came through, I can cover my ears and just have the versatility that a buff provides and it keeps my neck warm, especially with walking under these pines and snows falling. <laughs> this helps uh, keep the snow from running down in uh, my shirt on my back. And then I like to carry a lightweight hat. And then I always carry some kind of additional lightweight like synthetic type of layer. So I like to use a vest. Now if I needed to just layer up a little bit more so my base layer then this then my synthetic lightweight hoodie I can uh, move around my layer system that way by having this lightweight vest as well. And it's not I mean, you're on a day hike. Just carry uh, the extra pieces that give you the peace of mind of being out there to keep yourself safe and warm. You clearly, you gotta have a backpack, right? So in this case, I've got the uh, Waymark Gear Mile. This is fantastic day pack. And as always, I've got my Zolio satellite communicator device. And this goes on every single trip, no matter what, no matter the distance, because even out here, 15 minutes or so from my house, I don't have cell service. So. Uh, I bring the satellite communicator for that purpose as well. And then in here, I've also got first aid kit. So regardless of the distance where I'm going and everything, I bring a first aid kit in case I needed them for some reason. Uh, a lot of times in these trails where I'm at, the uh, area gets tracked down and so ice will form. And fortunately it's not, not been too bad. But I'll bring some kind of micro spike. Now these are the uh, Hill Sound Equipment Trail Crampon Ultra, but there's also like the Catula micro spikes. There's a lot of good options for micro spikes out there, uh, and I almost always carry micro spikes with me just in case. Last thing that we'll talk about is some kind of insulation for your butt, your knees, or whatever 
And so this is just a DIY piece of insulation with an eighth inch piece of foam wrapped around some waterproof fabric uh, just to like protect it and keep it uh, nice and everything. But that way if I'm sitting down or in this case, like my knees and stuff are not getting super cold from being on the ground. Other than that, water bottles and yeah, that's everything that I bring gear wise out on a hiking trip like this. So there is a lot more that could be said of tips and tricks that you could apply when it comes to winter hiking and backpacking. Uh, but I'm gonna leave it at that because I wanna keep it simple. Just focus on keeping it simple. Go out there, have a good time, take the right tools with you, take the right gear with you so that you ensure your safety and uh, follow leave no trace principles. Plan ahead and prepare and make sure that you are doing things that make it so that you get back to the car safely when you are out in kind of extreme conditions uh, like I am today. So thank you so much for watching guys. If you're not subscribed to the channel, you know what to do. Catch you on the next one. See you later.